Okay, hi guys, uh, Anthony here. Um, we've just got initial jobless claims coming out shortly. So definitely I'm interested, uh, as much as you are, to see how this comes out. And this does come after what we saw last time, which was this, of course, which was US posting record layoffs. This was the graphic from last week. You'll remember a, a record figure. And this dates back to going to the, you know, the 19... 60s basically since the data set began and you can see the quite incredible jump that we've had here interestingly you know in terms of layoffs obviously the unemployment rate um, skyrocketed in the global financial crisis we had a deep recession however it was much more graduated in terms of the the feed through effect in more nationwide job losses across america um, as compared to say a new immediate existential threat given it's a, a pandemic health crisis meaning an immediate amount of jobs just halted or people laid off meaning there's an incredible jump uh, unprecedented in in this sense the question mark for me now is about how does today's number come out expectations for three and a half million we've got a range of about one at the low uh, up to around five and a quarter at the high as i've said in the briefing this morning i've heard some people talk as as fantasiful as 10 million I think that would be uh, I'd like to say that's crazy talk but who knows I mean definitely from a market impact point of view the closer it gets up and towards that type of figure kind of north of six going towards seven eight million certainly the more violent and aggressive that initial knee-jerk reaction will be uh, for sure um, but yeah, a couple of different things then to, to have a quick talk about. For one, let's just talk about from a trading perspective, a couple of the charts. And one is I just want to refresh your memory about how exactly the S&P 500 reacted the last time we had the jobless numbers. Now, this is the S&P over the course of a, a kind of a week's activity. And you can look at here on the far left hand side. This was the last US jobless claims number. So I've just shown you the graphic. And obviously, you'll remember uh, quite vividly, it was a really it's a bad number in reality. Obviously, mass layoffs leading to a massive spike in people um, applying for, for benefits in America. However, markets skyrocketed after that because it wasn't as bad as people have feared. Now, what, what I'm kind of more concerned with now is about where do we go to from here? And it's about the consistency on these elevated levels of which this jobless rate might last. And that leads me on to this. Now, let me just jump here. Now, a lot of people talk about you know, a V-shape, a U-shape recovery. And I just really wanted to touch upon that briefly because beyond just this initial reaction we're going to see, the reason why it is quite important, um, non-farm payrolls is a little bit, uh, I guess, is going to reflect some of this, this initial jobless situation we've had over the last two weeks, but only a very small portion. So yes, the job decline in America in payrolls tomorrow will be almost a consensus estimate of nearly negative 300,000, but that number's probably gonna get way more significant in the following month's report, given how the reference period is set for when they conduct uh, the data set. So here then, understanding how consistently and to how high the jobless rate is and things like non-farm payrolls, consequently the unemployment rate, which we'll see tomorrow, is going to determine then what type of shaped recovery do we see? Because this was a great, kind of sentence or two that I saw that really hits the nail on the head and explains this. The key determinant is the, sh the, the shock's ability, so let's say the coronavirus, to damage an economy's supply side, and more specifically capital formation. When credit uh, intermediation is disrupted and the capital stock doesn't grow, the recovery is slow, workers exit the workforce, skills are lost, productivity goes down, the shock becomes structural. Yeah, so this is where we're reacting to these data points because we're thinking about what is the shape here of this recovery and the, and the depths of the phase we're in now, which is the immediate aftermath, will then define the type of recovery we're likely to see and how structural it is. So here, this case study is looking at um, examples of the global financial crisis. Now, Canada actually averted a recession. They managed to uh, perform a V-shaped recovery in this instance. So that's that classical 
uh, kind of immediate hit but immediate recovery. You then start looking at the U-shaped recovery, which is kind of an immediate withdrawal or immediate decline in interest rates and QE as we had 2008, 2009, 2010 and so on. But then a, a, a powerful but more graduated recovery. And then you've got someone like Greece in the European debt crisis. Uh, in the fallout in the early 2010s era where they've had kind of an L-shaped recovery. They've just never really got back to where they were, as you can see here. Pre-crisis growth trend is a million miles away from where the actual growth trend is as of now, 2019-2020. Um, so the question mark will be, however consistently and how bad these numbers are, will we see more, I think a V-shaped recovery now is probably lesser believed from a consensus viewpoint. A U-shaped, possibly, let's not forget, we've had an unprecedentedly large fiscal stimulus injection by nearly every government in the world, particularly in the developed world. Uh, America, that $2 trillion package from Trump, he's talking about a full stimulus package. The UK's done it as well. Germany now uh, altering their fiscal kind of management of their economy and providing stimulus. So the one thing I'd say is I don't think we'll get an L-shape. Will we get a, a U-shape? I actually think we might get a, uh, a Nike swoosh kind of shape, if I could add another one, which isn't quite as powerful as a U, but not quite as bad as an L. Uh, so again, context is what I'm trying to provide here for these numbers. All right, we've got about two minutes. So let's just have a quick look at the charts. So this is the S&P. Yeah, a bad number, bad, what does that look like? Well, the range top end is 5.25 million. So you've got to get above that for this to really break I would say this near term range uh, and that's going to be the kind of the, the daily low really since UK and Europe has come into the market. Uh, any move low below there and be looking to target the, the initial late Asia session European entrance point at 2466. And then the bigger test, of course, would be this Sunday, Sunday reopening low and also the low that was seen uh, late yesterday in the Wall Street session. So this is talking about a negative uh, development. In that sense as well, I'd also be looking for gold to pop higher. It's already been rallying going into the numbers and it's up 30 bucks. But a bad number, I definitely think we get up to that range kind of low up at 1631 here in the knee jerk reaction. Uh, and then oil will probably fit in tandem with the, with the number in a fairly correlated move. WTI already up two bucks, up and around its highs. It's either going to be a low number, it adds to positivity, a bad number, let's say jobless at six, seven million, this needs to come back down again. All right, we've got about 30 seconds. I'll put the squawk on. So they'll call out the numbers now shortly. Gonna leave my audio running so that you guys can hear everything. Six point six four eight million. Six point six four eight million. That's above the top end of the range of six million for the initial jobless claims number. Continuing claims. That's three point zero two nine million. Three point zero two nine million. Fully expected. Four spots eight eight two. Four week average. That's at two spot six one two million. Two spot six one two million. US international trade, that's negative 39 spot 9 billion. CAD trade balance, that's negative 0 spot 98 billion. Just to recap that US initial jobless claims figure, that prints at 6 spot 648 million. That's well above the expected 3 spot 5 and outside of the top end of the indicative range of 6 million. Yeah, so just turn the squawk off for a second. You can see equities now starting to look a little heavier. You can see the DAX here on the left, bit of a downtick. Uh, the Nasdaq just below its pivot and the support point that was holding through much of the European session, uh, making the S&P chart here a little bit bigger. So you can see that was that lower bound level uh, that was same with the Nasdaq holding up some of the price action at 81.50. So a little bit of a down tick, uh, not massive at this point. Um, so the number again, 6.648 million. So it's much worse than expected. It's not though fantastic in terms of how bad it is. And you know, there was talk on the streets, few people talking about 10 million, definitely is nowhere near that, but certainly uh, it's almost double of what we had last week. So look, it is it is a negative. So gold session highs now, you can see that gold just pushing up a little bit more, up 31 now on the day. Uh, will this be enough? I mean, the determinant factor here is I'd wanna see equities and a correlated move start to get a little bit more traction, uh, but gold, you know, fundamentally, this is a supportive piece of information. So another push up, now 25, 
coming up 25 26 now on the print so yeah gold getting a little bid on the back of that let's have a look at wti crude yeah not too much of a reaction there i mean we're talking about indirect kind of correlated moves here i mean it's more about that idea of a bigger broader impact on the economy by a higher jobless rate equating to a higher unemployment rate so worth just keeping an eye on does that provide a bit of a cap given the rally that we've already had i mean in oil here depends how brave you're feeling i mean you've got that r2 that daily high might this be the cap that's needed now to see a bit of a pullback and reversal in price for the rest of the day um yeah i mean a pretty decent risk reward i'd say you could look for an entry point around these levels with your stop loss just above the previous high at 60 and look to play the market back down um and again you, you're looking for more follow through at the moment it's a little bit um there's a little bit of lack of appetite it looks like to really drive it forward uh, given that you know everyone's obviously more bearish in their, their tilt to how they think the job situation is going to play out but yeah you can see that the initial reaction makes a little bit of sense perhaps a little bit uncommitted um, when we get to the open on wall street perhaps then things start to to, to show their hand a little bit more definitively uh, but as i said hopefully that's a, a bit of a snapshot of just what's going on i'll let you guys continue with your day hopefully that was useful